today I want us to look at this scripture, uh, especially verse 10. He says, For with the heart men believe unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I want us to look at this and understand that it's up to you. To take a right decision. You can see you have got a mouth and heart. You, you decide. If you want to see that the scripture is talking about your own decision making. Look at verse 9. Because if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, it means you can still decide not to. I want to speak about decision making. That whatever you decide, you will be tempted for. Just that whatever you decide, you will be tempted for. The writer of Romans was saying, It's your mouth and your heart you decide. But it does not end there. Because at the end of the day, you, you can be tempted for that. Look at this verse 11. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be put to shame. In other words, this something like a shame. Listen to this, there is something like shame. But when you speak with your mouth and your heart deciding, this shame will be changed to be something else. You won't be put to shame. Listen, I'm, I want to tell you that, for example, poverty. Poverty, when we say you have got poverty, is when you die poor. It's not when you are in the process and you are still alive, you are breathing. Because anything can be changed anytime. That's why the scripture here says, You won't be put to shame. It means when people look at you, they will say shame. But you won't be found in that shame. Tell them you won't be found in that shame. You must know that any decision you take, God will allow that to happen to you. That Satan will come and tempt you. Let me just show you another scripture from there. If we read maybe uh, 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter 1. And we read 1 to 9. 1 to 9. Let's go there. And we read. Tell your neighbor, when you take a decision, it's not over there. You must be tempted the reason why you took that. Can you just read from verse 1? Uh, Peter 1. Peter and Apostle of Jesus Christ yes. to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, 
Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge for of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace to might be to be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of, Je through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you stop there mama i want us to understand what we are reading peter was saying that there were christians who have been scattered and due to what they were going through when they were there they began to experience here the Bible says manifold uh, temptations. If you read verse 4, it says unto an inheritance incorruptible and undefined that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. Look here. This, there is incorruptible. There is a blessing that cannot be corrupted. Reserved for you. Yes, okay, look, these people have been facing a lot. But verse 5 shows that they have guarded that through their faith. When they were living a life of faith, going through the trials, they were going to incorruptible. Look at that verse, incorruptible inheritance and undefiled that does not fade it away that they can rather suffer in the world but there is something reserved for them in heaven I found that in our Christian life we compromise a lot but we don't know that out of our faith when we are living Christian life there is something that has been stored for us we can rather suffer on earth by trials and persecution go through shame and sickness difficult times that's why Christians must go through trials or temptations Christianity has not been promising as bread and butter Bible says, he who want to live godly life Bible face persecution. If you read there, there is something that has been stored for us. That, that by our faith. In other words, our faith, we maintain it when we are challenged by temptation. Your faith, you maintain it when you are challenged by temptation. Your, your faith fades when you are defeated in temptation. Do you know that temptations are there to prove you if you are worthy for what God is installing for you? Temptations are there to check if you are worthy for what God is saying 
about you. What you want to do for your life. I think our Christianity that we were talking about was of blessing. Things of the world. Was not of standing by faith. Or overcoming temptations. But by each decision. We are following. Each decision that you are taking. And you find that you are standing on that decision. Despise any temptation. I don't know if you are hearing that. Ask somebody say, are you hearing that? Okay, let's read, continue in verse 6. It, it says, wait. In ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if need be, ye have been put to grief in manifold trials. That proof of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes, though it is proved by fire. May unto praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that in the revelation, in the revelation of Jesus Christ, it must not only be when he comes back. It's when always when he wants to reward. When we say the name of Jesus, the revelation of him, must bring forth the reward that is worth it. But here you can see in verse 6 where we have read. Says, Though you are facing manifold trials and temptations, the decision you have taken makes you to rejoice. You still rejoice when you are challenged. We need Christians that can still rejoice when they are sick. Rejoice when they are poor. Because of the decision they have taken. Because that decision will be challenged. Are you sure you are Christian? You will be challenged. Are you prayerful? You will be challenged. Listen. When you say amen and we bring results after prayer. Sometimes amen. It can really affect our faith. If we just say amen and the results came, amen. automatically sometimes it can affect our Christian life. It can, it can be, be very affected. much spoiled. But it goes to a point when you say amen and nothing comes. And you still rejoice when you didn't get the answer. That is where we understand you are overcoming because of the decision you have taken. And you are being challenged on that decision. You are being challenged in the way you are today because of the decision you have taken. Tell your neighbor, you are being challenged today because of the decision you have been taken. That temptation is asking why you took that decision. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you just ask me that temptation is asking you why you took that decision. Some of you here, you battle with yourself before you enter. There was a serious temptation to challenge the decision you are taking. And you overcome and you are here today. I believe you are going to overcome. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these Christians by the time of Peter they were excited when they faced manifold temptation because of the decision they have taken. How do we know you are a Christian? Your reaction tells us after you are tempted. Let me show you this verse maybe to help us. In Luke 9, verse 62, Luke 9, 62, Jesus spoke and said, 
no man put a plow and look back is fit for the kingdom. In other words, after they take a decision, there will be temptations to make them to look back. Jesus says such people are not fit for the kingdom. In fact, I cannot be here and when I'm challenged, I say, don't come and preach. I cannot be when I read this scripture, I cannot be stupid on that line. Because, because what I'll be challenged of want me to stop doing what I'm doing. So I cannot I cannot be here. After I challenge, I say I'm not going back to preach. And the challenge might be telling me that I'm on the right track. Do you know that temptations is not there to people who are wicked? It's an opportunity of Satan to produce what you want to produce through them. The wicked are flexible in the hand of Satan. Whatever they do, they don't reason. They just reason there. And they are just searching for the results. I don't know if you're hearing that. Remember 1 Corinthians 15 58. It's not be movable. It means there are things that are there to move you. Be steadfast. Do, do not be shaken. Always be abound. In the work of Why? Because there will be challenge. challenge. you. Stop what you're doing. When temptations come, they are coming to move you. Because you have taken a decision to say, I want to serve God. But but you say, hey, be steadfast. Be steadfast. Do not be shaken. Stand your ground until God shows up. I don't know if you are hearing that. Pastor, are you standing your ground? You are Challenge, challenge by the decision you have taken. You are tempted by the decision you have taken. You know, uh, I can give you an example of now you are here. And you say you are Christian. And you say you are Christian. There have to be challenges that will come to you. Challenges that will come to you. To you challenge challenge I'm sure you are aware that there are Christians that after two or three years they move to another church. It becomes now, I mean, their behavior or a habit. Because Satan knows where to get them. Just look, let's read maybe Job 1. You will see what Satan was saying. Satan here was accusing God. Satan Whereas the Bible mentioned what happened to Job. If you read Job 1, just read Job 1, verse 1. Verse 1. You'll see the decision that Job took. Read verse 1. That is the decision. There was a man in the land of Uz yes. whose name was Job. Yes. And that man was blameless and upright. And the one who feared God and shunned evil. You heard that? This man took a decision of fearing God and shunned evil. Can you just read verse 8, Mama? Verse 8. Yes. Iri. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Stop there. Here is the Lord who say, Did you see this man who took a decision? If you can read going down, you'll find that Satan is the one who says, I ah, know. He took that decision because of you. You are 
au kama lawi ya fasuta kwa satana fetura rauwa muna o jeresi peto seka ora ngiru wena uya mushu ufata did you consider this man uilewa lemua muna u this man is blameless he took a decision when other people are defiling themselves himself saying no I don't want to be like them now look here Satan when he came there Satan I knew Satan was trying to question he always travel and worry can you just read verse 9 verse 9 verse 9 so Satan answered the Lord and said, yes. Does Job fear God for nothing? Can you hear that? Satan was saying, Job, uh, the reason why he's doing that is because of you. You, you. Is <laughs> the, the but here, Job took his own decision. <laughs> And to extend that God said, can you see the decision of Job? But Satan said, no, it's you. It's you. Look what you have done to him. In other words, this man, you took this decision because God is blessing him. Can you ask your neighbor, are you following God because of blessing? Are you following God because of position? Are you following God because of what you want in life? Job took decision. Job and he chose to live a holy life. To extend that, he became a topic between God and Satan. And God say, I, I've got a servant. <laughs> and Job say, I, I know why you did that. Can we just read verse 10 maybe? Verse 10. Yes. Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has? On every side, you have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. If you can read from verse 12, devil is the tempter, and our God does not tempt by evil. Now, Satan here was trying to destroy Job through God. He was trying to find a wrong formula. If you read, continue, you realize that God just agree and say, do what you can do. But do not touch his soul. Can I tell you something? Satan will try everything to you. But God will never allow him to touch your soul. As long as your soul is still in as long as you, God can change the situation that Satan is bringing. Don't give up. Don't give up. Job never gave up. Job He followed God to prove that he was with God before blessings came. We cannot leave God because of the blessings when we see blessings going on. We cannot leave God because of the blessings when we see blessings going on. We cannot leave God because of the blessings when we see blessings going on. He lost everything. But he still said God is alive. Can I tell you this? He knew God before he had his wife. When he faced what he faced, he said, God is still alive. As long as my soul is Can in you me. Can you just know God when nobody is not there? Don't know God when somebody is there. Some of you pray because somebody is there. You worship because somebody is there. Temptation will search for you alone. It won't search for you with your prayer partner. I don't know if you are hearing me. The decision you are taking is still going to be challenged by temptation. When Job was challenged, he was not afraid. He held this interview and carried on following him. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask me to say, hey, don't, don't allow God to leave you 
because you are trying to grumble by what you are facing because what you are facing is the promotion of what is coming so the decision you have taken stand by it until he shows up I don't know if you are hearing that stand on your decision I took my decision one of my decisions, nobody can stop me. Nobody can stop me. As long as I've got a mouth to as preach, I'll preach. If not, I'll do house visit. I don't know if you're hearing me. Nobody can stop me preaching. Therefore, it means I'm bound to preach. Paul said, who to me? He was saying, nobody can stop me preaching. He said, who to me? me, if I don't preach, I don't preach because people are there. I don't preach because I'm doing revival. I don't preach because I've got money that I'm supposed to receive. Me to me, if I don't preach, challenges will come like temptations to stop what God has assigned you for. Tell yourself that you will never stop doing what God wants you to do. Stand your ground do not move until God shows up if you believe shout hallelujah I love the Bible when it talks about Moses. When, when, when he reached the Red Sea, it was not easy there. When those people, they were warriors, those people. The people of Pharaoh were warriors. It was, it was not easy. When, look here. It was not only people who are from, from Egypt who were against Moses. It, even his people. His people began to say, now, hey, 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 look back. Can you see? Are you not the one who brought us here? So you brought us so that we die. And we are in the desert close to this. If, if we die here, there will be no sign that we ever lived. Why you didn't leave us in Egypt? Where we can die and have tombs and the Bible says in the book of Exodus that we are in the desert close to this that the generation must know we must know them in slavery and knowing that God was taking them from slavery to the land of Canaan but they were still enjoying themselves to go back I can rather be snowed in slavery than what God is saying about his promise one of the things that makes us to overcome all these evil temptations is the promises that God has set for us. I don't know if you are hearing me. Tell them that they are promises. Don't give up. They are promises. Don't give up. The people with Moses were problem. Even today, we still have people like that in the church. Who are saying, we are following this man. We are following this man. But we can't see where we are we're going. It's better when we are in the well. In the well, we used to eat salad. salad. But when we come to church, we can't see anything. And these are the people that could not enter Canaan. And you know what God said? God said, Moses, don't look on them. Look forward. And move forward. We need Christians that when they are tempted, they but move they don't look back and look at what they are hearing they go forward Pastor, I want to go forward I'm tired of looking back and hearing what the devil is saying there. I want to move forward if you believe shout hallelujah, hallelujah. I've read these scriptures and I found that most of the time we misinterpret it. In 1 Corinthians 10.13 10, 13, 13. 13. If you read that verse I will tell you the meaning of that <laughs> verse. It shows that temptation does not come by mistake. 
Temptation does not come by mistake. And this temptation, other people face it. And they overcome it. And how God make them to overcome, he open a space for them. He decided to stay there when the space is open. Let me try to tell you. One of the challenges we have today is when God opens his space, we don't want to move out. You know, even our challenges become our comfort zone. Have you ever find that you are going through something but you become used to it? You are working in a company that underpay you. But, but, but you are free to apply another job. You are, you, are, you are just if I go out, what if I get the worst? I, I don't know if you are hearing me. So now temptations will come and it does not come by mistake. Can you just read that verse 13? You say what? No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to men. Uh-huh. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Uh-huh. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Can you tell anybody? God is able. Look here. Yeah, the temptation you are going through is fit for you. If we take you to someone else, it will kill that person. God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted above. It's just like a test you need to write. I mean, you cannot be metric, in a metric you write exam of of a graduate. God is faithful. He will not allow that. Listen. God will allow it that Satan can come to tempt you because he wants to prove Satan wrong. Can you see temptation? It's allowed by God. But the temptation is from Satan. To prove you. I will give you example. But the time of Jesus, sons of Zebedee, they came with their mother and they asked for the position. The mother said, please, can you give me a another one on the left? And the Lord says, are they going to are they able to drink the cup? The cup was temptation. And, and, and the Lord says, yes, they will be tempted. Yes, they will drink it. But the one who put them there is not me. He's the one who will approve them. Is God. Listen, they, they came there with the mother. And the mother said, on the left on the right, but already here, Jesus knew what to he say. Are they going to drink the cup? They drink, they drink it. Something happened to them. They, they died honorable death. They died for their faith. But what Jesus was saying there was, for them to sit on the right or the left, it also comes from the courage they show to God. God. And that's how God will decide to take them on the left or the right. Listen, whatever we are going through is God who will decide. Out of the temptation, the actions you take determines you. When God approves you, they look at you and say, this one is worth it. This one is worth it to be an apostle. This one is worth it to be a prophet. This one is supposed to be useless. Listen, 
This one will be prayed for in the oh, church. Because, because if he can get a job, he will lose his soul. There are some, listen, there are some things that we pastors, when we pray for we him, must be very careful. Because it's a temptation. And God knows that you can be so blessed in you lose your soul. He will deny to give him. And temptation teaches you to and hold your faith. For what you are crying for here, you get 100% in heaven. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Do you know what I'm trying to say? There are some things that you have to be careful of. Unless we, we we take decisions which are right. And we are right. God will never allow us to have those things. We, we, we need to manage ourselves here. So that God will allow us to go forward. So even when we are blessed, we will be able to manage ourselves. Some things you will never get, even if you fast 100 years. Remember you won't reach 200 years. You won't reach You people won't reach, no one years, 100 years. So living here on earth is like to maintain what God has given you. He wants you to be what He wants you to be. And you live and go and live a holy life. You go and live an eternal life. But most of the time, you find that we are crying for things that will make us lose eternity. You are, you are just crying for a car. Of God. Of, of 2018. When you lose it, you want to kill yourself. I don't know if you are hearing me. So now, temptations will come to subject you to be what God wants you to be. God maybe want to humble you and you stay humble. That temptation will come to make so you humble. So that before you are known, when you are humble, when you are known, you will stay humble. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. Sometimes you can find that your deep business, nothing is moving. And you find that it's not Satan, it's God. God, God allow it. it. And Satan come to do whatever. So you carry on holding your victory of faith and say, I don't want to go out of the way. Can't you, God is looking on where he's taking you. And where he's taking you. You find yourself overtaking. Listen, don't judge someone when he's under temptation. Because God might be preparing that person to be a blessing. Don't judge someone when he's facing a challenge. He might be facing that challenge because of the decision he has taken. And that decision will bring forth the fruit one day. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to read some few scriptures we close. Let's read this. John 10. John 10. Verse 14 to 15. Verse 14 to 15. I want to show you the decision of Jesus. There. I am the good shepherd. I know mine. And mine own. My own know me. Even as the Father knoweth me. And I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus said, I know the Father. That's the reason why I took this decision. To lay down my life. Some decisions. That some of you people will, will, will be misunderstanding you. In your Christian level. It's because you know the Father. Once 
Jesus said, I know the Father. He was, he was expressing his decision. The reason why he took a decision is because he knows the Father. He saw the Father. I, I just believe that if you can be taken to heaven one day, and you see the Father, when you come back here, every day you'll be praying. You, 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 you take some decisions you have seen the Father. If you go to hell, and you see how people are screaming, and you see if you go to hell, how can you see and you see how people are screaming, and, and they take you only one minute in hell. When you come here, when you see a problem, of tempting you, you will just face aside very quickly. Because, listen to this, uh, the, any, so the way we behave towards the temptation, it shows our experiences with someone we know. If you know the Father, when you see something wrong happening to tempt you, you just ignore it. Because you know very well that there is something better than what you are doing. You can not waste time on useless things. You see why I laid down my life. I know the father. I know the father. That's why I laid down my life. I don't know if you're hearing that. Let me give you an example by Joseph. Joseph. Joseph, he knew God. Joseph, he knew that it was his brothers who were supposed to have killed him. How God saved him it was shocking. So he understood that wherever he goes, he prospered because of God. He remembered the visions and dreams that he were given by God. So he knew God. So by the time we went, the Potiphar's wife said, hey, Come and sleep with me. He didn't see that as an opportunity. He didn't see that as a blessing. Because he knew God, he ran away. Listen, you can overcome temptation because of what you know. If you have got the revelation of God, you won't waste time. You won't waste time. You won't burn. You won't entertain Satan. You will resist the Satan. When you resist, he will resist. He will flee. After I found this God, I called my wife, we sit down. There is nobody even today can tell you that. Mama, Mama, we have left our jobs. I say yes. What's the reason? Because God has called us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So now it's God who is supposed to support us. So from today, we don't recruit anyone. Isn't it? Yes. 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 We are still doing that. We are still doing that. You are not even recruited. It's God who brought you here. Because Look here. You can be tempted so easy. Because you need people to be a big pastor. You are supposed to do things that of attracting them to come to you. You forget Acts chapter 2. That is God who added me. It's not you, it's God. So now, if they are few, you do what you are assigned to. Don't allow Satan to tempt you. If you call them, you will position them. But if they are called by God, God. God will position them. So you are the one who can listen, can listen to the one who called you. I don't know if you are hearing me. I don't know if you are hearing me. Ask someone say, who called you? Uh, if I call you, 
You'll be a secretary of the church. Very soon you are prime minister of the church. Or you are, you are, you are vice president. But if God call you, the Holy Spirit will, will settle you. Will deal with you. And you are free yourself to follow God without challenging your faith. Don't challenge your faith. Overcome that temptation. Take a right decision. Because in any decision, there is a temptation. The moment you say, I want to live a holy life, ah, you will say, I will just say that. Ah. Listen to this. Some people who tempt you, they don't know who you are. They are judging you now. They don't know you are about to overtake you. When people tempt you, don't worry about them. They, they don't even know what is happening with you. You are, you are about to prove them wrong. I say you are about to prove them wrong. You, you see people sidelining you, don't worry. You see people try to judge you in a way you don't, you don't even worry. You are not their type. You are better than them. If God can reveal you, to them, they will ask for a job. I don't, I don't know if you are hearing me. Can I, can I pray for someone here? Today, that temptation that you were facing, you will never see it again. I say you will never see it again. You will never see it again. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I'm standing on my decisions. I'm moving forward. And I cannot be shaken. Glory be to God. God bless you.